Good morning, everyone. Would you please take your seats? Good morning. My name is John Avis, and I am one of the organizers of this Sackler Colloquium, sponsored by the National Academy of Sciences, entitled In the Light of Evolution 6, Brain and Behavior. Uh, the organizers are George Streeter, myself, and Francisco Ayala. And we hope that you will enjoy the next couple of days. We have an outstanding lineup of speakers. And uh, it's a, a beautiful environment in which to hold a conference. So we thoroughly hope you will enjoy yourselves and be educated uh, into the workings of complex nervous systems. Now, the image that's portrayed in this slide and that also graces the cover of your uh, brochure, your handout, is an MRI image taken from a living human being showing in color coding the uh, bundles of axons that make up the uh, uh, human brain. Of course, there are other many, many other ways to view the human brain besides MRI imaging, and some of them are not necessarily so pretty. I would like to start by reading a brief passage from the foreword to the book from which this image was taken. Uh, that was Portraits of the Mind by Carl Schoonover. And in the foreword to that book, he writes the following. The human brain is not a black box, and it never was. The first time I saw a naked cortex, he wrote, freshly removed from its bony casing, I was struck by its bloodiness. There was no soul here, just a thinking machine made of flesh and fat, dense with purple veins and leaking all sorts of spooky fluids. I couldn't believe that I had emerged from a similar mass, just these three pounds of meat with the texture of jello. The brain is indeed so brutishly of the body that it seems not that it's not surprising that people assumed for thousands of years that there must be something else, some uh, invisible substrate that explained the metaphysical aspects of the mind. It seemed ridiculous, after all, that such a material organ could give rise to the experience of an emotion or the taste of a peach or the words in the sentences that I'm uttering right now. Well, this symposium is not strictly about the human mind. Indeed, it's about the evolution of complex nervous systems. The broader title of our colloquium uh, begins with In the Light of Evolution. And of course, that's in reference to a very famous uh, quotation from uh, Theodosius Stubshansky, who way back in 1973 in a popular article wrote the famous words, uh, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Uh, Dobie happened to be the academic father of Francisco Ayala, one of the co-organizers of this colloquium. He was also my academic grand, Dobie was my academic grandfather by way of Francisco. So we thought it was appropriate to honor Dobie's memory with this sentiment that uh, nothing makes sense except in the light of evolution. Dobie, as we referred to him, was also uh, uh, followed many philosophers who through the ages have recognized three major phases uh, or episodes in the history of the planet Earth. Uh, there was, of course, the geosphere, the formation of the planet itself and its physical properties some five billion years ago. Uh, that transcended itself with the emergence later of the biosphere or the emergence of living forms of life. And then a third phase many philosophers and Dobie agreed with could be recognized with the emergence of complex nervous systems. And they called that the newosphere, culminating at least perhaps, one could argue to date, in the, uh, such magnificent structures as the human brain. We call this ILE 6 because this is the sixth in a series of colloquia with this umbrella title, In the Light of Evolution. In the last uh, six years, we have, or five years, we have held five pr prior such colloquia on different evolutionary topics. And these uh, are the uh, topics we've addressed, adaptation and complex design, biodiversity and extinction, two centuries of Darwin, uh, the human condition, and cooperation and conflict. This is an annual series of ILE colloquia. Each, each year, we choose a topic that is a topic that could be informed, we believe, by evolutionary thought or evolutionary thinking and that has broader relevance to society in one way or another. 
So of course that leaves us lots of latitude for choice of topics, and this year our topic is brain and behavior. Each ILE colloquium, the proceedings, are published in two formats. The first is as a special issue of PNAS, and the second uh, is as a book that comes out from the National Academies Press. And uh, we plan to do the same for this symposium. The proceedings will be published if everybody stays on schedule, which we enforce very strictly. For, uh, Francisco and George and I will enforce this. And this, the authors, uh, the speakers know these dates, but there is a, a, a definite time for submission of manuscripts and their review and their editing. And we expect the PNAS publication will come out sometime uh, perhaps in July, with the book shortly to, to follow shortly thereafter in the fall. So that is, in a nutshell, a brief outline of uh, this ILE series, which we hope will continue into the future. Uh, and we invite you back to many more ILE symposia in the future on topics, uh, some of which are yet to be determined. And we'll, we hope this will become an annual event to sort of celebrate evolutionary biology in the sciences. Uh, as far as this current symposium, we have two days uh, of talks. Uh, in, divided into four sections, uh, the brains in history, descent with modification is our first uh, topic on day one here. Uh, then later today we'll have brains in ecology, adaptation by natural selection. And then on day two, uh, we have evolving piece by piece, levels of modularity in neurobiology. And finally, human behavior, human evolution, brains and behavior. We also, I also remind you that we will have a keynote address uh, 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 after the banquet on, uh, uh, on one of the days of this colloquium. So again, I welcome you all to this event and I hope you enjoy it. It should be a very exciting set of speakers. I will also mention that because all of the speakers are distinguished and because their biographies are included in the program that you have before you, uh, the uh, chairs of each of the sessions will not give extensive introductions to each speaker. We will simply uh, confine our comment to their name and uh, location and introduce their title. And with that, we will start the first session with our first speaker, who is George Streeter, who will talk about evolution of brain development. And George is right here at UCI, the University of California at Irvine. <laughs> 